Example, uh, game that surely needs no introduction, at least uh, to anybody my age. So in the 90s we remember, uh, so walk into the computer lab and uh, over under how many Minesweepers are uh, on playing on the computer. So Minesweeper game seems to have gone out of fashion, so these days we have uh, all kinds of games, but uh, maybe somebody could uh, rethink and update the Minesweeper for the current year, so who knows what can other bonuses and other things one could think of. But uh, so Minesweeper, uh, as I realized uh, when I started to teach uh, Java course, uh, Minesweeper makes a great uh, final project uh, for an intro programming course uh, because uh, there is basically everything uh, in there that you need to learn in the intro programming course. So then uh, this assumes that uh, we have uh, some kind of mechanism to write GUIs, but uh, I used to teach that as a kind of sneak preview to the inheritance where so we, we can learn to use Swing just by accepting like an extension similar as a, as a magic at the time. But so this Minesweeper, so if we run it uh, take a look at it before reading through the source code. So let's set the main method opens up the frame. So opening click, now modify the rules a little bit just to have more fun that wherever you, wherever you click in the beginning that there cannot be a mine within the distance 2 or 1 or 0. So then we always get a good start. So then right clicking to mark the mines here and then also implemented the generalization of the rule. We know that the, if you are in an ordinary Minesweeper, you click on a, a tile whose value is zero, opens all the neighbors, and then we get to use a recursion. That's so what is so great about this project, that if the neighbor value is also zero, so then the opening continues recursively as far as it can do so, do so safely. But actually that rule, that if we open a tile whose value is zero, open recursively all the neighbors, is a special case of a more general rule that's gonna save us a bit of a clicking here, that if you open a tile whose value is equal to the number of marked tiles in its neighborhood, so then you can recursively open all the unmarked tiles. So then uh, the, the case uh, where opening a zero tile that uh, well if you have marked anything next to it those marks uh, have to be wrong. So it's the special case of this uh, more general opening rule. One, two, three. So then also the, so the opening rule opens uh, some of the tiles and their neighbors uh, like for example this uh, this one here got opened because it had uh, one next to it so this uh, would uh, be open in the normal version uh, so then you can I'm just gonna and then when you die so then the game moves to the revealing state and you click it again to start the, the new game from the beginning okay so let's through the minesweeper the the code and point out the all the interesting things uh, from the intro programming course uh, perspective and then there is a little good uh, techniques there to learn so let's open it up so from the top uh, a bunch of uh, ordinary imports there and uh, implement <coughs> implement the game as a swing component extending j panel as i as i always do and uh, the state so the, the game so uh, the size of the board, so the game is played on the regular grid, so grid width, grid height, uh, they give you the height, uh, the dimensions, and then when initially seeding the mines, uh, so then here I just, uh, each, each tile is uh, independently a mine or not, so probability as a floating point number between 0 and 1, uh, I do sometimes use floating point, they're not uh, entirely, but we just gotta uh, realize the situations when to use floating point and when not to. But here, so uh, in these kind of games where things are don't need to be super accurate, so so probability as a floating point number, and then so the, is the is the game in the playing state or the revealing state? So then uh, flip flopping between the two, and also. So is uh, this now the first, uh, so has the, is the player opening the first time? Because we're gonna be delaying uh, the seeding of the mines until the player tries to open the first time. So then with the guarantee that we don't get any, uh, any mindset in the neighborhood of that time. Uh, this uh, Minesweeper, so now we get to use uh, two-dimensional arrays. So recall that in Java. 
there is no 2D arrays, there is one dimensional arrays, so this is what this last pair of square brackets means, and then whatever precedes uh, is uh, the element type, so the element type is a one dimensional array of truth values, so a, a 2D array uh, is an array of rows, and each row is just a 1D array. So with a bit of a redundancy here, but for the simplicity of the code, uh, because uh, not all combinations are possible, but uh, we're just gonna have a true, uh, have a, gonna have a three a 2D arrays, each one uh, the exact same size, the same as the dimensions of the board. So one array telling uh, is there a mine in a given position, yes or no. Another one saying whether a position is open, yes or no. And the third one whether a position is marked, yes or no. So we see that there's redundancy here. We realize that if a tile is open, it cannot be marked and vice versa, but uh, this extra memory use is so trivial is small and that, that we happily pay that extra memory use that doesn't really cost us anything in any real game, uh, just that, uh, to make the code simpler and more straightforward. And then once we see the mines, because the mines never move, perhaps uh, in the current year update of the game, so mines could move and who knows what could happen. And then uh, so uh, then uh, we pre-compute the, these uh, numerical values uh, at the time that we see the mines in place. And of course we're gonna need a random number generator to do so. Uh, then some uh, named constants for the game parameters. Uh, so what is the display size of a tile in pixels? So 30 by 30. Then uh, so uh, it's uh, often nice uh, just to feel better to leave some uh, breathing room. So margins to the outside. So x offset, y offset. So is uh, where we start drawing relative to the top left corner. Remember that in a swing components the coordinate system origin is at the top left at the way that it's conventionally in computer graphics. So this uh, x offset and uh, so 10 by 10. So we're gonna leave a 10 uh, pixels uh, wide margin to the side to the left and right side and uh, 10 so 10 pixel wide margin above and below. Enough, uh, uh, I will remember when we get there uh, what that is and uh, then uh, so we can use uh, uh, any font so I don't know where this came from. Uh, so if if uh, font is not installed in your system so then this uses some default value. Okay, so constructor. So every swing component, uh, like uh, like any, any any other class, has a constructor executed uh, once uh, at the object creation. So uh, we do the swing specific settings, the background color, and uh, the preferred size. The preferred size was the only the uh, only setting that you have to tell swing. Swing cannot read your mind. So we we'll do some math to calculate how many pixels uh, display we see, considering the margins and the tile size and uh, the number of tiles uh, dimensions, and uh, then. So store the parameters to the data fields and uh, now uh, previously we had the action listener with the button. Now we're gonna be listening to mouse. So now we'll see a mouse listener and the mind listener uh, because, uh, because it's a uh, long I did ever now write it as a local class. Could have been a local nested class because we're using it only here in the constructor. But I wrote it as a separate uh, inner class uh, because it was uh, felt too big uh, to, to be in here. So the proper way to write an event handler to a swing component uh, so is, to, is to write the event handler as a nested class. And then the logic here. So remember the constructor is executed exactly once at the object creation. So things like the setting up a mouse listener that should be done exactly once and then never, then never again that you do them in a constructor. But uh, now when you have a game that allows the same game to be played multiple times, so then we, we realize that the act of initializing the state of the game has to be extracted to a separate method of its own. So of course we call that method here at the end of the constructor, but if we took the statements in the start new game method that we'll get to soon and wrote them in the constructor, now because you cannot call the constructor yourself, so then that would mean that every time you wanna start a new game, you would have to create uh, a whole new instance of this Minesweeper component. But extracting the things 
like this mouse listener that has to be done exactly once in the beginning and then never again as opposed to the initialization that can be done every time uh, it, when inside this existing component we start a new game. So that ladder has to be extracted to a separate method that has a name so that then uh, you can call it again from the other methods. You, you cannot call the constructor yourself. Okay, and then uh, utility method that uh, given a 2D boolean array because we're gonna be using this method uh, for both uh, mines and marked so then uh, so that we don't have to duplicate the code so uh, this uh, method receives a reference to the array sometimes it's gonna be the, the mines uh, boolean array sometimes it's gonna be the marked boolean array but this method doesn't know it just gets a reference uh, to the boolean 2d array and count so how many uh, of, <coughs> of this boolean neighbors uh, so the eight neighbors, uh, one king, uh, chess king step away from the coordinates x, y. So how many are, <coughs> are true? So now because we're acting in two dimensions and looking at only uh, neighbors uh, one king step away. So suppose you had to uh, uh, go through all the neighbors, let's say 10 king steps away. So that's what uh, uh, 21 times 21. So, uh, uh, so then you would be definitely using some kind of four loops uh, for sure. But here because it's just a three by three. So, so now the difficulty is here. We got to make sure that when we're at the edge of this array, that if you try to access a neighbor over the edge that doesn't exist, so, so then you get an array index out of bounds crash. So then only if we are not at the left edge, so the x coordinate. Uh, greater than zero. So only then we're looking at the neighbors at the uh, at the position uh, uh, x minus one, and then we can uh, be for the y coordinates uh, be equally careful. So we just have uh, eight of these. Uh, so three to the left, three to the right, and then one immediately above and one immediately below. So so then that's the potentially eight uh, neighbors uh, of a tile carefully. Uh, at the edges. So uh, we just look at an increment the sum. So whatever the sum is in the end uh, is then the number of neighbors. So now this logic of starting a new game uh, because uh, like I said earlier. So what happens when uh, we start a new game? So then the game is on and uh, the player the next click that they make is gonna be uh, the first uh, tile that they open. Uh, we create the new arrays. Well, we're just throwing away the old objects, but uh, so we're easier to do this way than uh, to fill them all with the uh, falses again. So just throw the old array objects away and uh, create new ones. It's not, not like we're gonna run out of memory here. And uh, in, it's the same thing for the integer valued array. And then, so in the swing component, so here is now a useful method to know that you need to do in the event listeners, that the swing, remember, is the boss at all times. Your components have no say when they're gonna be repainted. So a swing can at any time decide that now your component needs to be repainted and then calls the paint component method to do so. But calling the re repaint, so then this is a method in every swing component, it's from the J component the superclass. This is the way to for a component to give a friendly hint to the hint to swing that or at a swing something I'd like to look different now because something has changed in what I'm supposed to look like. So this one informs swing that the please in the next available opportunity sir call my paint component method that I get to display myself the way that I currently am. So this way, uh, we, we, we're going to be updating uh, the, uh, the display, the state of the board, uh, whenever the user, uh, uh, user uh, clicks on a mouse. Method for initializing the game board. So seed mice, and then it receives uh, the coordinates, uh, the tile of the first uh, click. Uh, that took place. So the rule, so when we are looping to the board, so to loop through a 2D structure you need the two nested four loops out of one through the rows of the array for each row the inner one looping through the columns and uh, the, uh, the, the truth valued formula that is assigned uh, to tell whether x, y is a mine. So uh, 
the distance uh, of the xy, uh, the, this is gonna be the Manhattan distance. Yeah, so the, this creates an empty diamond shape. Uh, the Manhattan distance of the tile has to be at least a 3. And then in addition, so the formula to remember how to make a weighted coin flip. So how to make a coin that gives you true like a 30% at the time. So RNG next double uh, is a random uh, uniform decimal number between 0 and 1. Test whether it's uh, less than the probability that you want the heads to come up. So that, that the expression is uh, for the weighted coin flip is uh, handy to know. Having filled the board, so now then we can uh, pre-compute the numerical values. Good thing that we had this uh, count neighbor methods uh, already written. Then uh, the, uh, every graphical swing component has a paint component. Uh, the same uh, uh, magic uh, that we did before and uh, then so each uh, tile is just rendered as a rectangle and uh, the color depends on whether it's uh, open and uh, whether it uh, has been uh, uh, so if it's open, so then it gets rendered as an M letter. I kept looking for some unique code uh, bomb symbol, but uh, couldn't get to work it at the time. Maybe my font didn't uh, show it at the time. Maybe I should look into this. So then uh, the values uh, greater than zero are rendered, and then the values zero are not rendered. That also makes the display less, less cluttered. And the not open tiles are just the round corner rectangles uh, with the cartoon uh, black uh, outline around it. All right, and then the event the handling for the mouse uh, listener. Uh, so then uh, uh, previously we example we had an action listener. So we implemented action listener. So here we would implement mouse listener with five methods as a convenience. Uh, this is not, uh, I guess, not necessary anymore now that the Java interfaces can have default implementations of the methods, but they then used to have. So as a convenience for each one of these event listener interfaces, uh, mouse, uh, the corresponding adapter, like mouse adapter for mouse listener, uh, do, uh, do nothing implementation that has every method implemented with an empty body so that you don't need to write them. So uh, when you extend uh, uh, instead of, uh, so when you extend mouse adapter, you need to override, let's put the tag there again so that it's there. You need to override only the methods uh, that you want to do something. So you can just inherit the do nothing versions from mouse adapter. So for the mouse, there is a press, a release and click for the buttons. If we're listening to clicks, um, why, why am I not extending mouse clicked? For the reason that the mouse clicked, uh, so it has a delay because it has to wait to distinguish between single, double and triple click. And furthermore, so if the mouse goes down, so that's the mouse press, the event happens immediately. And if the mouse moves even one pixel, which often does uh, with, the, with the human hand, so then it's no longer a click, it's a drag, and it's a different listener. So therefore, so I implement mouse pressed. So that the moment that the button goes down, so that's it. So that so that you will react immediately. So then the game is immediate and snappy. So you can see what happens if you turn this into mouse clicked, compiles and runs, but uh, it's not as uh, fun to play. Okay, so then the, the effect of the click depends on the state of the game. So if we are in the uh, game on uh, that uh, displaying the end, so then uh, the click has the effect of starting a new game and then remember to return right away don't continue opening from the position of the click so the click just starts a new game it's not the actual first click of the new game a little bit of a linear algebra so uh, x and y so, so the mouse event so the object uh, has all the information about the click so we need to ask it what was the pixel x and y coordinates these are relative to the component uh, convenience. So then uh, you can also get the, uh, co uh, the click coordinates relative to the screen, but uh, we, we care about relative to the component, the click in the coordinate system of the component. So this is the raw coordinate, uh, subtract the margin and divide by how many pixels for each tile. So you get the tile coordinate. And uh, same thing for the uh, vertical direction. And uh, we ask the mouse which button. 
So uh, again, Unix X window terminology, we talk about left, middle and right button, but there is button one is normally what is the left button. Uh, so then left button, we call a recursive method to open the tile at the grid coordinates. If that one returns true, so then game over, so then, then hit mine. And this method returns false to mean that the clicking was successful in the sense that no mines were hit at least. Otherwise, so using either the middle or the right button, not the left button, so then we just uh, depending on, uh, so, so that it, then it has to not be open and uh, then we toggle the market. So notice a handy assignment to toggle the value of a boolean variable, assign the negation of itself uh, into itself. So false becomes true and true becomes false. And then uh, this uh, recursive co continuation that looping through the array that if a tile is open, and uh, its uh, value uh, is the same as uh, number of marked neighbors. Again, the utility count, count neighbors comes handy now with the different array than previous time. Uh, so then uh, uh, try to open it, but uh, just uh, with a different mode now and uh, then opening. So it can still hit a mine. This will happen if one of your marks was erroneous. So, so then uh, you get uh, penalized for that one. So do this for every tile and uh, repaint. And uh, now it says uh, we don't have to implement the other four methods to do nothing because we inherit the, the do nothing implementation. Now the recursion. So this is now good uh, recursion example. Uh, open a tile at the grid coordinates uh, x, y, uh, with the uh, neighbors is true, do not open, but check whether it can be open. Oh, so that, uh, that, that's what it did. It's been, been a few years since I looked into this. But the, the recursion, uh, so if uh, the base cases, so uh, we can handle the edges that if, uh, if you're trying to open a tile uh, outside the edge, do nothing. So now it's safe to go across the edge. Now we don't need to duplicate the edge test in all these calls. So we just do it once in the beginning. So if one of these recursive calls goes out of edge, so no problem. It just immediately terminates doing nothing. And then the second base case of the recursion is that if a tile is already open or if it's already marked. So do nothing and return false. And then, so if this click is now the first click, so then it, the next one is no longer the first click, and now we will recurse, we will initialize uh, the state of the minefield at the first click. And then uh, after that, so this uh, tile X, Y is now open, and if it was a mine, so too bad, so return true. Otherwise, so, so now the tile X, Y has been opened, and uh, let's check if the neighbors can be opened. So if uh, so, we're gonna recursively open the neighbors. If uh, the value of the current tile uh, is uh, equal to the number of marked neighbors, so uh, the case of opening a zero value tile is just a special case of the more general rule. I uh, initial version uh, that I well not the initial version, but the one that I updated a few years ago. I added some more convenience uh, to lessen the clicking, but uh, then it, there was so many that the one opening click basically opened half the board, so then the game was no fun anymore. So just have to strike the balance of uh, convenience and uh, being challenging. So, uh, recur so the result and uh, the result so or on. So if any one of these recursive calls says that you hit a mine, so then the results gonna be true. And all of, if all of these are false, then the results uh, gonna remain false. So this recursion, this makes a fun uh, example of recursion. That's why I use this one as a, this whole Minesweeper as a 109 programming project.